virtually all the British press are now reporting that terms have been agreed for the fight between Anthony Joshua and Vladimir Klitschko and that it is virtually a done deal. It's not yet signed though, however, because the situation with the sanctioning bodies has yet to be resolved. And if you don't know what that situation is, basically, Eddie Hearn, and I'm assuming the Klitschko team as well, want the fight to be for more than just Anthony Joshua's IBF heavyweight title. They also want the vacant WBO and WBA titles to be on the line. They see, I'm speaking now from the Eddie Hearn Joshua perspective, they see the fight as too big of a risk to take just for the IBF title. They want Joshua to have an incentive and something to gain out of it uh, by way of more titles. So that's what the situation is, at least from the Hearn side. And Hearn has, it has seemed to insinuate that it's the same from the Klitschko side. Now, I saw Team Parker, that is Team Joseph Parker, come out in recent days and say that if their fight against Andy Ruiz, which they're planning for later on in the year, isn't for the uh, vacant WBO title, then that fight won't go ahead. So they're obviously aware that there is a power struggle right now between them. Well, <laughs> they're obviously blatantly aware. They're more aware, aware than us because they're in the power struggle. They're one half of the power struggle. But yeah, they're basically saying that there's a power struggle going on between them and Matchroom and Klitschko at the moment to try and get a fight for that vacant WBO belt. And the uh, Joshua team and the Klitschko team will be presenting their proposal to the WBO and the WBA and say, look, we've got this fight virtually signed. It's a huge fight. There'll be a big sanctioning fee for you both there, uh, WBO and WBA. So what do you say? Do you want to sanction our fight? That's what's going on at the moment. We'll see what happens. As far as the fight itself, if it does go ahead, yes, I'll still be surprised that Eddie Hearn is taking this type of risk with his biggest cash cow, but it is boxing, so maybe it will happen. Maybe he thinks Joshua is just that good and Klitschko is over the hill. David Hayes certainly seems to think that. He's saying that Joshua will destroy Vladimir Klitschko. And I have to say, I did go back recently and look at Klitschko against Brant Jennings. And Jennings is athletic, but not as talented as... Uh, Anthony Joshua, I would say, but Jennings is very wily because of the fact he's a small heavyweight and he's not really a puncher. He has to be wily and, and tricky, at least defensively. And he certainly was in the Klitschko fight. He did use his legs and mess with the range and all types of stuff. And on top of that, the referee didn't allow Klitschko to do his usual holding routine. <clears throat> and that's another thing that could be crucial in a Joshua Klitschko fight. According to David Hay, David Hay, at least, he thinks that Klitschko might actually get disqualified against Anthony Joshua for holding. He says as long as there's a strong referee in there, as soon as they get close and Joshua starts unloading, Vladimir Klitschko is just going to hold. And he does it excessively and the referee will end up disqualifying Vladimir because he just won't want to live with Anthony Joshua up close. That may happen. I certainly think Joshua is a lot more active up close than Anthony, than uh. Vladimir Klitschko is. Joshua lets his hands go. He'll lean a shoulder or an elbow into your, into your chest and start unloading. We've seen him do it countless times. Whereas Klitschko only holds up close. He literally throws no punches up close at all. It's only on the outside that he'll throw shots. So, I don't know, maybe the scenario David Hayes talking about could actually uh, manifest itself. We'll see. When the fight was first talked about in the very very early stages most people seem to be saying that this is way too early for Joshua he's going to get knocked out by Klitschko but the further along the negotiations have gone I've seen more and more people come out the woodwork not just David Hay just you know random boxing fans and they're saying that they think Joshua is going to beat Klitschko and that is interesting there seems to be a a turn into the tide and there seems to be a lot of people who think that this will be kind of a passing of the torch fight. I mean, some people are going to say that Tyson Fury versus Klitschko was a passing of the torch fight. But I guess, you know, people have got different opinions. Anyway, they think that Joshua will be too young, too fresh. Reflex is too good, too strong, too ambitious 
for Vladimir Klitschko at this stage. Personally, I can definitely see how Joshua could win the fight. I think he is you know, closer to his prime maybe than Vladimir Klitschko is. But, and you know, fighters peak at different ages. Not everybody peaks in their late 20s. Some fighters peak in their early 30s or early to mid 30s. So, you know, that's debatable. But still, from a physical point of view, I think Anthony Joshua does have the ability to be, beat Vladimir Klitschko. But experience, it's like they say, there's no substitute for it. There is no substitute for experience. And I'm just wondering if Anthony Joshua is ready mentally and technically to fight Vladimir Klitschko. I know he's ready physically. He's very strong. He hits hard enough to hurt Klitschko and knock him out. No question about it. He's got athleticism and speed and all that. But is he technically and mentally ready? Because Klitschko is smart. Yeah, he's wily. He's smart. And he knows all the tricks. He knows how to get his punches landed. And I've got no question in my mind that if Klitschko lands clean on Anthony Joshua's chin, Joshua goes to sleep. Klitschko hits very, very hard. And before I close out this video, I just want to leave you with this thought. You should all know by now that, that uh, Vladimir Klitschko is a very naturally cautious person. He's not a guy who likes to take risks without an enormous reward. And here's the thing. Surely Klitschko could get the WBA and the WBO titles without having to fight Anthony Joshua. When he had Joshua out for sparring, when was it, a couple of years ago now, I think it was for the Pulev fight, they sparred apparently 20 rounds, Klitschko and Joshua. So, so Klitschko would have got a pretty good feel for how good Joshua was at that time and what Joshua was actually capable of doing at least in his own mind. And based on what happened in, that, in those sparring sessions, Klitschko feels safe enough to actually take this fight against Joshua. With a year out of the ring at 40 years old, he, he may have been impressed by what he encountered in the ring against Joshua in those sparring sessions, but he wasn't that impressed, was he? Or he wouldn't be taking this fight if he does take the fight. So just bear that in mind. Maybe he knows, or at least thinks he knows in his mind, exactly how he's going to beat Anthony Joshua. And maybe he thinks it's actually not going to be particularly difficult. Let me know how you feel in the comment section below about everything I talked about in this video. It's your boy Hatman, I'm out.